Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do another foundation review on the brand new Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Foundation. When you open it, it comes with, you know, like all the little information about the bottle. And then here's the bottle. It comes with the little red symbol. And then the packaging is glass and it has like a frosted matte appearance. Um, this foundation is standard one ounce. It does have an SPF of 25 and it's supposed to be long wear and high coverage. So basically a very full coverage foundation. It's supposed to be for all skin types and it's supposed to have a matte finish. To do it says this foundation melts into the skin blurring imperfections while offering daily uva and uvb broad spectrum spf 25 through armani's beauty through armani's beauty's own micro fill technology powerful ultra fine pigments are shaped to provide the highest coverage foundation and the thinnest lightest texture allowing a little to go a long way. So you're not supposed to have to use a ton of this product to get the coverage that you need. And it says it's supposed to last up to 16 hours and there are 20 shades available. The shade that I got was the lightest shade. It is in shade one, which is um, the rosy undertones. Um, I'm not sure how well this will match me. I did try it on the back of my hand the other day and it seemed to be all right. Um, when I did try it on the back of my hand, it really smoothed my hand over and it made it matte, but it did give it like a kind of a nice natural finish, which I do prefer and I do like. If I haven't said this, said it already, it is a $64 foundation, so if I do not like this, it will be getting returned. Um, so far online, it has really mixed reviews. Um, there's people that love it, there's people that hate it. Um, but most of the people that don't like it are usually accustomed to the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, which I haven't tried before. Uh, as far as I can tell through anything which we'll see today, I haven't seen anybody complain about it oxidizing or um, leading flashback in pictures. And because um, this does have an SPF in it, it does have an expiration date, and the one on my bottle is for 1018. So keep that in mind when you're buying it. Um, anything with an SPF, of course, will have an expiration date. So let's go ahead and get into the application of it. I am in my robe. I'm going to go get ready for the day after this. So so I the only thing that I do have on my skin is my sunscreen and my normal moisturizers. But yeah, I haven't tried this one out before. So it's, in this video, I am going to use my Artiste brush on one side and then my Beauty Blender on the other. And it does come with a pump which I really like, um, and it's pretty controllable. I'm just gonna kinda dot it around. It might be too light for me, <laughs> by the looks of it. It is a little too light for me, so I probably should have gotten shade two. Um, if I do decide to keep it, I'll probably exchange it for my shade. But with this brush, it is blending it out really nicely. It's not leaving streaks. It does... Got hair everywhere. It looks kind of powdery though on the skin already. I think I might like it better with a beauty blender. Yeah, I don't know guys. It doesn't dry too quickly where you don't have time to work with it though, so that's nice. So I'm going to take another pump on my Beauty Blender on this side this time, and I'm going to blend it out on this side. The shade is definitely a little too light for me. I really cleaned it on to my nose area and the dry patches on my nose right now. I'm gonna see if I can go in and layer it. I still can see like all the red spots even though it's saying it's supposed to be full coverage. You do get a little bit more coverage with the brush um, but the Beauty Blender applies it a little bit more a little bit nicer. Um, I'm gonna go in with this another pump. I would say that this does not build. <laughs> it is looking a little cakey when you build it. And I have to go do errands after this, so 
We're gonna wear it though. We're gonna wear it. Kind of does um, how some foundations, you know, how they pivot into your pores and leave like little white marks or um, sometimes powder will do that. That is pretty much what it's doing to my skin right now. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but on this side, it has clung on to all of the dry patches that I have on my skin right in here. And it just, it's also dug into my pores a little bit and it just, it doesn't look smooth. And it looks like I put on way too much powder on my face. You can kind of see it on my chin too. And the coverage isn't that great. Alright guys, I'm going to go finish off the rest of my makeup. And I will be back in just a little bit. And I'm back. Alright. So I just finished off my makeup. I just did a really basic face. Um, my bronzer is the Kevin Aquan... The Kevin Aquan sensual skin enhancer in tropical days and then on my lips I have Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk and the lip cheat and then I have uh, Maybelline vivid matte liquid and 10 nude flush I did not set this with a powder because you you don't need to it dries down to a really powdery finish and it looks really powdery on the skin um, any sheen that you see is a little bit of highlight that I put on um, because I was looking so dull. So I would say that this is super, super matte. Um, so far, I don't know. Um, after spraying it with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus, it kind of settled it down a little bit where my dry patches didn't look so dry. Um, so right now I kind of want to just see how it wears throughout the day. Um, because after doing the MAC Fix Plus and uh, the bronzer and everything, it doesn't look awful. It just... It doesn't wow me for $64. But you can see on my nose right here, um, even though it's supposed to be full coverage, it it didn't coverage it didn't cover all the red spots that were on my nose. Um, it still looks a little cakey in this area. And the time right now is noon, so I will probably be back around three or so to give you guys a check-in. Um, but yeah, so far it's all right, but. We'll see where it goes. Alright guys, it is currently about 3.30. Um, I've had this foundation on for about between 4 to 5 hours, almost 5 now. And so far, I'm still not that impressed. It looked really good. It actually did look really nice after I set it with a misting spray. Um, but it's actually starting to get a little bit oily, which I have really dry skin, so that was something that I was not expecting, especially considering that it dries down so powdery. Um, this check-in is in natural lighting, uh, so I didn't really put that much highlight on my face, um, so any, like any of this glow that you're seeing around my forehead, especially like on my nose, that is from the foundation, um, just being oily. Um, it of course is worn away around my nose, which is where it almost always wears away first for me. Um, but that's just because I wipe my nose constantly. But I'm going to zoom you guys in and let you see. And at the moment, as you guys can see, it just looks really cakey. Like around my nose area in that crease. And then on this side, it's starting to really cling on to all my dry patches on my nose. And it just looks really cakey in this area. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it perfectly or if the camera's picking it up. My forehead doesn't look too bad, but my forehead usually never looks that bad. Um, but yeah, I will be doing one last check-in here in probably like another four to five hours before I go to wash my face off for the night. And I will be doing that again with my ring light on because by that time it'll be dark. Um, but so far, I I'm not liking this foundation at all. Alright guys, so it is the end of the night. It's around 7.30. I've had this foundation on for about 8 hours now. Well, bring it to me. He always wants to play. Give me a toy. Come on. Alright. 
Um, I took my contacts out and I've been wearing glasses for about the last three hours or so. And you know, like any other foundation, it's worn off around uh, the area where my glasses are sitting. I have to say, I am, I'm not impressed with this foundation at all. Um, it's a $64 foundation and it's supposed to be up to a 16 hour wear. It, it looked okay um, after I applied it, after I sprayed it down. It did start to look really nice, um, even though it kind of clung on the dry patches at first. But as the day has gone on, it has just reattached those dry patches and has caked onto them and kind of just built up around them. And so it, it just looks really, really bad right now. And it's also, um, I, like I've said before, I have dry skin and it's become, I don't want to say oily because I don't feel it on my face and it still feels lightweight, but it, it's become very, very shiny on my face. And I mean, you can kind of see it in the camera that it's become shiny. And for somebody with dry skin, that's not something that normally happens with me. And especially I wasn't expecting it with this foundation considering it really dried down to a powder finish. And I didn't set it whatsoever. So I was kind of surprised. Um, I'm going to zoom you guys in so you can see. But I mean, just look at it. It looks absolutely terrible. Around the nose especially. Like, I mean, granted that's my glasses wearing away, but places around here, it just, it's so cakey. It's just so cakey. Overall, I can't say that I would recommend this foundation. Um, it's definitely a skip for me. If you guys have tried this foundation and you have a different skin type, whether it's oily or you've tried this foundation and you have dry skin, let me know what you thought of it down below. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope this review and demo was helpful. Uh, if you would like to, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video.